Hello everyone, myself Deepa Singh, working as assistant professor in Gandhi High School of Pharmacy, SGU Jaipur. Today we discuss about pharmacokinetic parameters or introduction of these pharmacokinetic and dynamic parameter and some models. And uh, in this manner, we may be covered a non-compartmental model. And next lecture, we see the compartmental model. So in this lecture, we know that the different different parameter, the different pharmacokinetic parameter, the introduction part, models, uh, the different type of the model, and how we perform these model with the help of some study. So all these we covered in this lecture. It's a topic of biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetics, six semester subject. Learning object before starting this topic, you should know about these are the learning object or main object of this topic or this lecture. In this introduction of the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic means what is the pharmacokinetic and what is the pharmacodynamic. In the previous lecture, we already covered that the definition part, or you should at least know about the what is the definition of this. Pharmacokinetics mainly include ADM parameter dynamic means therapeutic response uh, shown by that particular drug. So in this introduction or description part of the pharmacodynamic and kinetic parameter, different pharmacokinetic and dynamic parameter means which parameters come in uh, the pharmacokinetic condition or which parameter or what parameter come in pharmacodynamic parameter. Means different different parameter which is required for pharmacokinetic as well as dynamic condition. We are studying this lecture. Next is different pharmacokinetic model including compartmental and non-compartmental model. Means so you should know about that this pharmacokinetic model are two types basically compartmental model and non compartmental model. And in this, you know about the, what is a compartmental model and what is non compartmental model. So, there is a difference between a compartmental and non compartmental model, and the subtypes of this compartmental and non compartmental model. You should know all uh, information regarding this modeling or compartment and non compartmental modeling. So, this is regarding the learning objects. This is the overview that uh, contained in this lecture or in this faculty, basic consideration in pharmacokinetics and compartmental model. In this uh, definition part or introduction part, first is dosis regimen. In dosis regimen, the frequency of administration of a drug in particular dose is called as dosis regimen. And uh, in uh, next part, we can say that next definition is pharmacokinetics. Before this, we know that what is dosis regimen. Uh, definition itself explains that it's a frequency or time of administration of a drug in a particular dose is called a dose regimen. Suppose you are administering four five, so how much interval you take or how much frequency is required for giving another dose or another uh, formulation. So this uh, frequency of administration is known as dose regimen. And next is a pharmacokinetic. A pharmacokinetic is defined as kinetic as a drug absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. We already say that uh, this is a study of ADM, that is absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion, and their relation with pharmacological, therapeutic, or uh, toxicological response in a man and uh, animals. It means uh, with the help of this uh, ADM study, or this study of kinetics of this ADM, we use uh, this study or check the relationship of pharmacological response or therapeutic response or toxicological response means uh, how suitable that particular drug for showing therapeutic response or that particular pharmacological response as well it may be contains some toxicological or toxic or side effects. So you can study these all parameters with the help of this ADME or kinetics of ADME. Now, with the help of man and animal, we can just compare this relationship. Now, in this, there are two aspects of pharmacological study. One is theoretical aspect, and the second is which involves the pharmacokinetic models to drug predict the drug deposition after its administration. It means uh, it is dependent on two aspects of this pharmacokinetic, and it has two aspects. One is the theoretical aspect, and second is experimental aspect. In theoretical aspect, you can say that it's a pharmacokinetic model and predict the disposition after administration. Disposition mainly uh, already see that it's a part of metabolism and uh, excretion. And uh, in this, uh, not excretion, deposition. And uh, in this, you can see the disposition effect after administration, after administration, or after administration of that particular drug. In this statistical method, I'm normally applying the data and assesses various parameters. 
means these method is mainly used or you can solve with the help of some mathematical data or mathematical equation or parameter first you administer the drug after administering this drug you check the deposition parameter with the help of this deposition parameter you can check for the response of the drug in this main the statistical model are commonly used with the help of statistical model you can interact to predict the data or check the various variable parameters next is experimental aspects in experimental aspects which involve the development of biological sampling techniques means uh, those who are involved in development of biological sampling techniques analytical methods for measurement of the drug metabolized concentration in biological sample and data collection and evaluation so in experimental experiment X aspect there is a different uh, parameter that you check or develop in this development of the biological sampling technique is majorly involved with the help of this biological sample or biological method to check the parameter in the analytical method or measurement of the drug and next is metabolites in this concentration in biological sample and data collection and evaluation in form of biological sample present with the help of that sample will collect the data and evaluate that data. So this is regarding the some uh, database or sampling base of for experimental aspect. In theoretical, you mainly check with the help of a statistical or mathematical uh, equation. And so this is regarding the form of the planet. Means you should check the kinetics of ADME or KADME and then interrelate the this relationship with human as well as animal. And uh, in this, uh, you uh, calculate two methods, or the two methods of this form of planetary. One is theoretical, and second is experimental. In theoretical, you check with the help of some theoretical prediction or mathematical and uh, the position of the drug you check. And next is experimental. In experimental, with the help of some biological sample or collection of the data, you select or check the amount of the drug or uh, sampling method has to check with a form of planetary. So this is a pharmacokinetic parameter and their abbreviation fundamental units and their units example means sir, what are the pharmacokinetic parameters uh, different, different uh, pharmacokinetic parameter abbreviation how you abbreviate uh, that particular term next is the fundamental unit and unit example. So um, before starting this uh, pharmacokinetic or dynamic parameter, should know about the different uh, parameter and uh, their abbreviation because these are very important. These abbreviations are largely used in uh, day to day life or uh, your all uh, pharm pharmacy related subject may be anywhere. So these are the some parameters. In this first is uh, area under a curve. That is abbreviation is AUC and fundamental unit is concentration X time. And unit, for example, is micro x or uh, multiply into r divided by m. And next is total body clearance, that is CLD, total body clearance. Volume into time is fundamental unit, and unit example is liter per time. Third is the renal clearance. Renal clearance is an r or uh, clearance of r, CLR. And volume into time, liter per time. Next is hepatic clearance in this CLH for hepatic clearance. Next in this volume, X volume into time. And unit example is unit per time, so liter per time. And fifth is apparent volume of distribution. This is denoted by BB or volume. The fundamental unit and the unit example is liter. Next is volume of distribution at a steady state, VSS, due to steady state. Fundamental unit is volume and the unit example is liter. Next is the peak plasma concentration. And this uh, C max is the abbreviation or uh, concentration to plasma. And fundamental is concentration and in the example is Mg per ml. Next is the plasma drug concentration that is CP. Fundamental unit is concentration and uh, unit is Mg per ml. Next is the steady state drug concentration in this CSS. Uh, concentration and uh, fundamental unit and unit example is mg per ml. Next is time for a peak drug concentration that is T max or fundamental unit is time and uh, unit example is uh, HR. Next is dose that is uh, DO or D0. Fundamental unit is mass and unit example is mg. 
the next one is the loading rules that is dl and uh, mass and mg in unit example 13 number or next number is maintenance rule that is uh, dm because it's the maintenance rules and the uh, fundamental unit is mass and the unit example is mg protein is a mode of drug in the body in this db abbreviation of fundamental unit is mass and the unit example is mg and next is rate of infusion abbreviation in r fundamental unit is mass divided by time unit example is mg per r in next first order very constant for drug absorption in this ka fundamental unit is 1 divided by t and the example is 1 uh, divided by r 1 per r next is zero order rate constant of drug absorption that is k is equal mass by time and the unit example is mg per r and next is first order rate of constant for drug elimination that is k and in this fundamental unit is k divided by t or 1 by t uh, that is time and the unit example is 1 per r and 19 is last one is elimination half life abbreviation is t and the fundamental unit is time and the unit is in r so these are the abbreviation or some form of the kinetic parameter according to the unit uh, you should know all these abbreviation and these parameter with the unit so this is regarding the form of kinetic parameter next is go chart on dynamic representation of plasma drug concentration in this effectiveness of the drug process as you know as concentration of drug in the body means how much drug available in the body or effectiveness of particular dose as you know and uh, this is depend on concentration of the drug in body or how much drug present, present in your body then it is further divided into two part that is concentration at the site of action or uh, maybe concentration in a whole blood that is plasma serum saliva urine csf so uh, this is mainly effect is depend on particular site or how much drug present at uh, required site or therapeutic uh, site so this is further divided into overall blood and uh, whole blood including all body parts and concentration at a specific site and if your drug present in a whole blood then pk parameter will find the drug concentration how much remaining drug present in that particular whole blood or other sites so we just compare uh, how much present in a whole blood or how much is available for that particular site or site of action so this is the plasma drug concentration time profile next is a typical plasma drug concentration time curve this is a very important and this almost as all found kinetic and dynamic parameter are the present here and uh, this is a very important uh, graph or curve you can use uh, in other subjects also and in this mainly we plot plasma drug concentration versus time is time versus plasma drug concentration we are plotting and uh, this one we have one peak or one graph curve and in this when we see that this is a uh, absorption phase or absorption is uh, start from uh, this point and as well and this is a maximum concentration that which is all the uh, concentration or maximum concentration of that right because see, it's a c max we already see that c max is the maximum concentration of the drug so this is a c max upper part is a c max and uh, this is the absorption phase and this is the c max and after absorption or after reaching maximum concentration of the drug or after c max post absorption phase is include or next is the post absorption phase means after absorption it's a post absorption phase uh, this is absorption this is the c max and this is the absorption phase and uh, here is the time where the duration of action get started or onset of action is observed so onset of action is started from here and next is this is duration of action how much time is required to show the effect or complete duration of action next is area under the curve or area under the curve is this this is known as area under the curve this line and it calls the intensity of action and the onset of action from here and tmax is from here and the next if it show more effect or more uh, therapeutic effect or uh, more drug are available then at particular point or after that particular point it produce toxic effect or any adverse effect or um, harmful effect so that particular point is known as toxic level means uh, this line is show that uh, this is a required amount therapeutic amount after this if your drug show more effect or more therapeutic effect then this level is known as toxic level 
because sufficient impact is produced, but the drug is starting producing some toxic or some adverse effect. So this is known as toxic level. And uh, below is this, uh, this one is therapeutic range from a starting onset of action to this required amount of action or this uh, particular time is known as therapeutic range. Or this is the range where your drug shows the required effect on a particular side according to the action. So this is the therapeutic range or therapeutic requirement of your drug. And below this, there is a sub uh, therapeutic level. This is a sub therapeutic level where uh, drug effect is very less is observed or uh, no effect is observed. And after this post uh, absorption thing, there's elimination phase, means your drug start decline, eliminating or exclusion from your body. So this is your elimination phase. In this, this one is MSC. It's maximum safe concentration. From this point, it is the maximum safe. After this, there's a toxic level that is starting, started. So this is a MSC, that is maximum safe concentration. And this is a MBC, that is minimum effective concentration. Here, the minimum or starting of a therapeutic and uh, the response that is started. Means uh, you can say that the uh, starting of a drug showing effect is just started from this point or onset of action. And so, you know, this is known as ther sub therapeutic level and about the therapeutic range. And this point is known as minimum effective concentration because the drug effect is just starting from this point. So, this is all about the plasma concentration time for this is your time versus concentration of your drug. So, this is all about the regarding the curve. And this now we discuss the different parameters according to pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic parameter and depend on this graph. In pharmacokinetic, usually when there are three parameters and again subdivided to some parts and major three parameters in pharmacokinetic is peak plasma concentration, that is C-max or maximum concentration, peak plasma concentration and it is depend on or this peak plasma concentration of C-max is depend on administration dose, rate of absorption and rate of elimination. Means how much drug you administer at particular dose, or how much drug is absorbed, and how much is eliminated out. So, in this condition, maybe we are checking absorption, elimination rate, or the administration dose of the drug. Next is time of peak concentration, that is C max, or maximum time required for maximum effect or maximum peak reaching. So this is the Pmax time of the plasma concentration or maximum time required for big formation. Next is AUC, that is area under curve. So these are the three parameters which are the pharmacokinetic parameter and remaining all are the pharmacodynamic. Hence AUC, Cmax, and Pmax we consider in pharmacokinetic. And remaining parameter is this, which are in the category of pharmacodynamic parameter. In this pharmacodynamic, first is minimum effective concentration, that is MEC. This is a minimum effective concentration, and uh, next is a maximum safe concentration, that is MSC. Uh, this is a maximum effect, means uh, you uh, study both minimum as well as maximum effective concentration in pharmacodynamic parameter. And this MEC is a minimum effect, and MSC is a maximum effect or safe concentration. Next is the onset of action. After this onset of action, it's the onset of a time. How much time is to that particular action or time is required for that action. And duration of action means time interval for that particular action. Next is intensity of action, therapeutic range, and therapeutic index. All are the parameters for pharmacodynamic parameters, pharmacodynamic parameters. So these are the analyst or list of pharmacokinetic as well as dynamic parameters. Now we discuss this one by one. In this first is rate or rate constant or order of reaction. In this, uh, we will start in this topic also with uh, parameter pharmaco and dynamic. You should know about rate of reaction in this rate constant or order of reaction. First is rate. Rate is the velocity with which drug reaction or a process occur in a porous group. Means after rating, after administrating drug or after taking the drug. Uh, the velocity which uh, is the reaction or it is the process which is required for uh, that particular rate or particular reaction. This is known as rate. Means uh, the velocity which reaction or process both are the upper. How much reaction is observed and process of uh, showing effect of a drug is called as rate. And in the next is order of reaction. Order of reaction is the manner in which the concentration of a drug or reactant 
may influence the rate of reaction or process. It's called as order of reaction or order of the process. Means uh, order of reaction means after administration or after that particular day, you check the concentration of a drug or reactant, uh, how much of uh, concentration is available for that particular effect or should be effect or reactant. And uh, after this, influencing the rate reaction, how it influences the rate reaction of process is called as order of reaction or process of, uh, of the reaction. In this, considering the following chemical reaction, drug A and drug B. These are the two reactions, or maybe your drug converted in A to B drug form. And this, in this, the rate of forward reaction is expressed as uh, minus B, A by DP. This is the order of a reaction. And in this negative sign, indicate that the concentration of a drug A decreases with time T, means A is the amount of concentration of a drug which decreases with time T, and the reaction proceeds the concentration of a drug B increase and the rate of reaction can also be expressed. Uh, in this uh, means you can say that when you start with the reaction, there is a A reaction or your drug is in an A form and after some time the reaction may start thing or concentration of drug in decrease and these drug A is to proceed the reaction and uh, concentration is converted into drug B or rather increase the concentration and rate of reaction can be expressed as this dB by dt or dc by dt is equal to minus tcn. In this reaction, k is the rate constant and n is the order of the reaction. So, this is regarding the order of reaction or rate constant. Now, we start with different pharmacokinetic parameter that we already understood in previous slide. In this pharmacokinetic parameter are determined experimentally from a set of drug concentration collected over various time is known as data. Means uh, different different parameter you collect or you check uh, at particular drug concentration of particular experimental condition over a particular time. So this uh, uh, pharmacokinetic parameter determination over time is known as data, and these pharmacokinetic are also called as variable. So uh, means another name of this parameter is, is variable name or synonym of this parameter is variable. So you can also say that the pharmacokinetic or dynamic variables. Uh, there are two types of variables. One is independent variable and second is dependent variable. So these are the two variables uh, which is uh, show this pharmacokinetic and dynamic parameter in this independent variable, variable which are not affected by any other parameter for example time. So independent variable, when we see that, uh, we can say that time is an independent variable because it's not uh, your hand or it is not a fact by any other parameter. And uh, when you administer the drug, time start or start, so which is an independent variable or independent parameter, we can say that time is an independent variable because it's not a fact by any other parameters. Next is dependent variables. Independent variable which change has an independent variable change. For example, plasma drug concentration means uh, with the help of this independent variable, it get changed or which has changed with independent variable. Means independent variable is responsible for changing some variable or show the changes in some variable. So um, this dependent variable is your plasma drug concentration and it is dependent on the time or independent variable. So these are the two parameter, two variable independent and they are dependent. Independent is your time and dependent is class matter concentration. With the help of time or independent parameter, this will change. So this is a class matter concentration. In pharmacokinetic models, uh, there's a different pharmacokinetic models is also available. And in this drug movement within the body in form complex process. The major process, uh, major objective is therefore to develop a generalized and simple approach to describe the analyze and interpret the data, obtaining during in vivo drug dissolution study. And uh, these are the some form of a kinetic analysis data, means uh, the drug movement within the body of complex process, uh, how drug is moved from your body or from the complex. And major objective is therefore uh, to develop a generalized and simple approach to describe the analyst and interpreted the data. Uh, means after checking, you can easily check the approach or interpreted the data with the help of analyzed or interpretation of that particular data during in vivo drug deposition study. And the major approach is qualitative study of the various kinetic process of the deposition in the body is model approach or model independent approach. 
more model independent approach is also known as non compartmental analysis. So, these are the two uh, models of pharmacokinetic model that is, model approach and model uh, independent approach. In this analysis, one is model approach, it is further divided into three uh, sub parts of three different types. In a model approach, first is a compartmental model, second is physiological model, and third is distributed parameter. So these are the three model approach or subtype of the model approach parameter. And in this, it is further divided into different parts or different subcategory. For model approach, this compartmental model is divided into two further types, that is mammary model and veterinary model. And the physiological model is further divided into two parts, that is perfusion, uh, perfusion limited model, and second is diffusion limited model. And uh, next is distribution parameter model, is the third type. So this is all uh, three are the model approach model or pharmacokinetic data. Next is model independent approach. This is depend on non-compartmental analysis. This is not a compartmental, but a non-compartmental analysis. So these are the different pharmacokinetic model or model approach independent or dependent models. And in this next pharmacokinetic model approach, uh, that is to say the three types in this model is hypothesis that employ mathematical term to consequently describe quantitative relationship. Since uh, this pharmacokinetic model approach is the hypothesis or mathematical term for approaches for quantitative relationship. And this pharmacokinetic model provides the concise means of expressing mathematically or quantitatively the forces of a drug throughout the body and compute the meaningful. Uh, means uh, with the help of uh, some mathematical equation or quantitative equation, you check this uh, pharmacokinetic model of which parameter throughout your body of the uh, meaningful uh, uh, response. And in this pharmacokinetic parameter application of this model, first is characterizing the behavior of a drug in patient. We check uh, behavior of a drug, how uh, much drug is responsible for showing effect or ensure that particular desired effect or not or any side effect is of the hormone. So this is uh, one model which gives the uh, characterizing the behavior change of a drug in, after giving the drug in patient. And uh, next is predicting the concentration of a drug in various body fluids with any other research form means after administration, after uh, giving the drug, you check the how much drug is present or predicting the drug concentration in the body in various parts of this various body fluid. So with the any dosage regimen, means you check the concentration in various body parts or how much drug concentration present in different different body parts. And next is predicting the multiple dose concentration or from a single dose experiment. Means you check the multiple dose concentration or uh, with the help of multiple dose uh, concentration curve, we check uh, how much response is observed or how much response is seen for that curve or single dose experiment. Next, in this is calculating the optimum dosage regimen for individual patient. Main suppose you are giving these drugs to different different patients or number of patients. Then you check uh, optimum effect or desired effect for individual patient, not in a group. You check uh, or observe individual patient with their response or their dosage regimen. And this next is evaluating the risk or toxicity of certain dosage form. You can check uh, if there is a toxic or side effect is observed or not, or toxicity of a particular dosage regimen. And uh, evaluate this toxicity with some other drug or similar drug which is available in the market. So evaluate this toxicity with some another dosage regimen. Next is correcting plasma drug concentration with pharmacological response. And then how much drug is also showing the pharmacological response of check with the help of concentration of plasma drug concentration. Plasma drug drug. And next is evaluating the bioequivalence between the different formulation of the same drug. Means you can also check the bioequivalence study or bioequivalence of a particular drug. If we have got same formulation of the drug or same drug. Next is estimating the possibility of a drug which metabolites accumulation in the body. How much drug is accumulated or in the drug or metabolites accumulate in the body. And in this next is determining the influence of other physiological disease state and drug ADN. 
means uh, he or she or their particular patient suffering from any disease. So in this condition, some physiological changes or changes takes place, and if you produce a uh, problem or this disease stays, the some ADM parameter is also changed or so the improper ADM nature of the disease. So with the help of this family managing model of parameter, we check that this alteration in physiological model or ADM in the study of the drug. Next is explaining drug interaction. Means suppose we are taking two drugs or he or she may suffering from any disease and he or she may take two drugs. So in this condition, we also check the drug interaction of the drug, how it interacted, how easily it shows the effect. So this is the explaining the drug interactions also. Next is type of pharmacokinetic model. Pharmacokinetic model are three different types. One is compartmental model, it's called as empirical model. Second is physiological model, is known as realistic model. Third is distributed uh, parameter model, or called as realistic or uh, realistic model. So these are the three models. We already see this model in a previous flowchart or uh, that uh, flowchart. In this, uh, these three models have uh, another name, or these are the different three pharmacokinetic models. First is a compartmental model, and this compartment is known as empirical model. Second is your physiological model, this is known as realistic model. And third is distributed parameter model, it is known as realistic model. So these are the three models for pharmacopanetic. In this first, we start from compartmental model. So compartmental analysis is the traditional and most common use approach to pharmacopanetic characterization. Means with the help of this uh, compartmental model, you will receive so many details or good results because it's a traditional model or commonly used model uh, from different pharmacokinetic characterization or approach for different pharmacokinetic characterization of the drug. And these models simply interpolate the experimental data and allow the empirical formula. Means with the help of this compartmental model, we interpret the experimental data as well as allow the empirical formula to estimate uh, the drug concentration which time. And in this, depending upon whether the compartment are arranged in parallel or in series, compartmental model is variable to category. That means according to the distribution or according to the arrangement, it may be arranged in a parallel or in a series way. So this is a further divided into type of two different category according to this parallel and series way. One is mammillary model and second is catenary model. This is the further development of uh, further subtype of compartmental model according to the parallel and series arrangement. Since compartmental are hypothetical in nature, and compartmental, compartmental model are based on a certain This body is represented a series of a compartment arrangement either in a series or a parallel to uh, each other that communicate diversely with each other. Means uh, you can say that your body is a one series which uh, are different number of uh, arrangements or different parts and these parts are arranged with each other maybe in a series way or in a parallel way. So in this compartmental model we uh, check that uh, is compartment or according to your body, we check the arrangement either in series or in a parallel to each other and communicate diversely with each other. In this, each compartment is not a real physiological or anatomical ratio. Means each parameter is not a real or physiological anatomical uh, region, but is a fructosious or virtual one and considered as a tissue or group of a tissue that have a similar drug distribution characteristics. Means you can say that uh, there is a different tissue or group of tissue available, and these have a similar drug or distribution characteristics or distribution effect, and similar blood flow uh, and if affinity of the drug is also observed. And these assumption is necessary because if necessary organ, tissue or body fluid can accumulate this drug is considered as a separate compartment. And these assumptions is also very important because it's equilibrated with drug concentration of separate compartment of the body and this body is compromised of an infinity number of a compartment and uh, this is a mathematical description of a such model will be too complex or uh, it is uh, not easy or containing too much complexation of uh, drug in your body so this is regarding this assumption Within each compartment, the drug is considered to be rapidly and uniformly distributed, that is, compartment is a barrister. 
now uh, your uh, body is continuous in a moving condition so when you take the drug uh, your body should be in a stirred condition so after taking the drug it should be rapidly or uniformly distributed in your body our drug is distributed uniformly or rapidly in your body because it's in a balanced stirred condition so in compartment you also have take this type of model of a balanced stirred condition the rate of a drug movement between a compartment that is entry and exit is described by first order kinetics means after taking the drug the entry process or exiting of the drug or movement of the drug from entry and exit is described by first order kinetics or check this process with the help of first order kinetics in this next is rate constant are used to represent rate of entry into the exit form from the compartment means the rate constant you also calculate with the help of for some parameter how much drug is entered or entry of a drug or exit of a drug from particular compartment next in this is mammalogy model this model is the uh, most common compartmental model used in a pharmacy finally in this there is difference of model in mammalogy model or this is also known as open model or extravascular administration model in this model one is one compartmental or open model or intravenous administration means this is a open model and given by drug is intravenous administration or by iv when you give the drug your first order rate constant that is k10 or k0 and second model is one compartmental open model extravascular in this oral or rectal route administration mainly takes place in this intravenous administration and in this is oral and rectal route is the administration is takes place and this is uh, intravenous and this is extravascular route because uh, drug is given by oral and rectal route or extravascular route and this is also a one compartmental open model and uh, in this when give with the drug it may be chances that uh, it excrete out or it goes in k0 or maybe it show reversible process and it will to another uh, sorry this one is next and in this uh, also same procedure as a previous one but uh, these drug is given by intravenous route so in this there's no first step of reversible process it, it, your drug goes directly into your blood or in your body because in this intravenous or uh, iv route is used and next is in one compartmental open model using uh, extravascular route or drug given by oral and rectal route that's why you administered the drug and then it goes in your body then elimination or uh, goes in in constant rate next in model 3 that is two compartmental open model or intravenous administration so name itself says that two compartment means there is a two compartment one is and second one is this in previous it's not only one compartment but in this there is a two compartment so when they see there is two compartmental model so one is a, a drug from here because this is also given by intravenous route so the drug directly reaches in your body there's no administration process or uh, no absorption process also so this is your drug after administration i will do then it reversibly goes to second compartment this one is the second compartment this is a reversible process then this is the rate constant or first order process elimination process next model 4 is two compartmental open model extravascular administration means same as previous one but uh, this is given by extravascular administration or by extravascular route and this one is for administration of intravenous administration in this first is administration or absorption of the drug is takes place that is k01 then it reaches to first compartment then reversibly goes to the second compartment that is this one is the second compartment and after reversibly it comes again in first compartment this is the reversible process and admission is same but there is an administration process this change because it's a iv and this one is extravascular next is model 5 in this there is a three compartmental open model intravenous administration means first two are the one compartment then next two are the two compartment now this one is a three compartment so you can see that there is a three compartment And in this uh, fifth number model, the drug is given by IV route in three compartmental model. So first, you administer the drug, then it reversibly goes to a second model or model number two. This is a reversible process. K one two is going, and this is reversible process. This K two one, and after one compartment, there may be chances that 
the drug can also reach us in a third compartment. Means there may be two compartment tarsus, maybe here and here. This both process are reversible process, K13 and retaining K3. So these are the two reversible process or two compartment additional in three compartment. And this one is K10 constant release. The next last one is pre compartmental open model extravascular administration. Means this one is also similar for this one. But here your drug administered by intravenous route and here you administered by extravascular administration or extravascular route. So see, after administration, there is absorption is takes place because you are giving the drug in extravascular and uh, there's three route, uh, three model. One is this, this is the reversible process to second compartment and one to third is also reversible. So this two are the reversible process and this is a rate constant process. Uh, so these are the six models. In this, uh, in this is one model, one compartment, this one is two compartment, this one is three compartment, all these three have a two administration. One is intravenous administration, second is extravascular administration. So these are the two administration process of this mammillary model, or these are the model for mammillary model. In this, the number of rate constant which have appeared in a particular compartment given in by R means rate is represented by symbol R or use R for uh, representing the rate of reaction of that particular model. And next is for intravenous administration, R is equal to N minus 1. And for extravascular administration, R is equal to 2 N, where N is a number of compartments. Means uh, this reaction will vary uh, or depend on the compartmental model, is one compartment, two compartment, or three compartment. So N is the number of the compartment. And uh, next is intravenous administration is the C reaction or extravascular is this one reaction and the uh, NS compartment. In this, uh, you can see this is an example of catenary model or second model that is catenary model. In this, there is three compartment, K0 is administration, then uh, first or uh, first model of uh, first compartment, then first after first compartment, drug is goes to second compartment and uh, then and after second compartment is goes to third compartment. These uh, processes also reversible process means from one to two and two to three is a reversible process and this is a rate constant. This is a linear, uh, linear or parallel reaction because uh, in uh, C the in compartment model this is depend on a series or parallel way. In previous uh, mammillary model they are a series in reaction like series they are not a parallel or uniform. But in this they are a parallel or in a single line so this is a catenary model. Next is the physiological model. This model we discuss in next lecture, probably in the next lecture. So the remaining part of this topic or this lecture we covered in the next lecture. And now we are coming directly to outcomes or learning outcomes. So these are the learning outcomes. In this, you should know about introduction of a pharmacokinetic and dynamic parameter. We already cover introduction and different parameter of this pharmacokinetic and dynamic parameters. And different pharmacokinetic parameters, uh, including example, what are the, the parameters. Uh, first, you know about the definition and description part of pharmacokinetic and dynamic. And then after this, you should know about the different, different parameters that are responsible for this pharmacokinetic and dynamic study. Or the division is also we see with the unit or uh, which parameters we study in pharmacokinetic including pharmacokinetic study. All we covered in this uh, topic. And in a model, we don't cover all the models, but uh, we should know about the different type of classification of the model. We see that one chart, one compartment, one no compartment, one laminary, catenary model, and memory is further divided into different compartments. Or this is dependent on parallel or series compartment in model. So these are the issues of study in this lecture. We you know about the complete study of this uh, different, different parameters or different uh, classification of this model. After this outcome, this is a reference part for this topic. First is biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetics team and uh, Madden first edition. Second is biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetics team Ramanita Smith and P. Jetswan first edition. Third is applied biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetics team Sarchil and Andrew fourth edition. Next reference is by pharmaceutics and clinical pharmacokinetics by Melu Kabaldi, fourth edition. So these are the some book and these are the some sites uh, which are used for this topic. www.google.com, So these are the reference part. Next, after this, a question part of the question topic comes related to this topic or regarding this topic. 
In first question, the heart will come in which compartment or in which vertical compartment? So in this option is peripheral, second is the central compartment, C1 is both compartment, and D is the semi-peral compartment. Means in the peripheral, central, or semi-peral, or in the both peripheral and the central. These are the four options. Next is second question. A U M C is the area under curve. B is the area under zero movement curve. C is the area under the first movement curve. D is the area under the third movement curve. So we know about the full form of this term. Next is the pharmacokinetic is the A option study of biological and therapeutic effect of the drug. B is the study of absorption, distribution, metabolism, and expression of the drug. C is the study of the metal mechanism of the drug, absorption, and action. There is a study of a method of a new drug development. And fourth question is what does pharmacokinetics include? Complication of a drug therapy is the influence of the drug on metabolism process. And C is a drug by transformation in the organism. B is the influence of a drug on the gene. Next and fifth question half life is the time required to change the amount of drug in plasma by half during the elimination. We metabolize half of the introduced drug in the active metabolites. C is absorb half of the introduced drug. D is a binder half of introduced drug to plasma protein. And next and sixth question, half-life does not depend on is by transformation. B is a time uh, of a drug absorption. C is a concentration of the drug of the plasma. And D is a rate of elimination. Next and seventh question, in one compartment of open water term, open, open indicates the input and output are A is unidirectional, B is bidirectional, uh, C is non-directional, and D is bidirectional. And in eighth question, linear pharmacokinetics also referred as the first order kinetics, B is the third, second order kinetics, C is the pseudo order kinetics, and D is the third order kinetics. Next, ninth question is mathematical concept which describes the space in a body, which uh, drug of the enterprise, order of reaction, B is compartment, C is distribution, and D is elimination. In tenth question, the manner in which drug is taken A is dosage by cement, B is dosage volume. C is a doses loading and D is doses uh, emission. These are the four options for the 10th question. This is all our question related to this topic. We will continue with this remaining body in the next lecture. So thank you so much for watching and listening to this video. Thank you everyone.